Uh, but moving on, let's so let's talk now. Yeah, let's, let's let's talk now about the ooh. second incident that happened last night. Cold, go ahead. I, I'll let you. So I'll let you start off. You know? Nah, for sure. So we had about eight what eight seconds left in the Thursday night football game. Pittsburgh Steelers are taking on the Cleveland Browns, and so Mason Rudolph. Cleveland. Took- Yes, exactly. In the brown voice. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Mason Rudolph. I think it's a. Th- I think it's a third and seven or third and eight. He throws away. A, he or he tries to throw away a pass. Miles Garrett tackles him on the going down. So as Miles Garrett is sacking him, he tries to strip the ball away. Mason Rudolph goes for Miles Garrett's helmet. Miles Garrett then, after Mason Rudolph kicks him in the groin, kicks him in the nethers, right. And you know, says something to him. Miles Garrett takes Mason. Oh wait, Rudolph. wait, you forgot a part. He also charged at him as well. Right, right. After doing all this, right, then Miles Garrett grabs Mason Rudolph's helmet like Debo. <laughs> he come at him like Debo after after uh, Chris Tucker in Friday. Swings the helmet, makes contact, whacks him like a whack a mole <laughs> up top the head. And now we have a whole situation. This then transgresses to the end zone where Marquise Pouncey, the the center for the for the Steelers, and another lineman for the Steelers are now kicking Miles Garrett in the head while Miles Garrett is on the ground in the back of the end zone. So we had it went <sighs> it went from an NFL play to a bah God, it was it, it was like JR in WWE when they leave the <laughs> ring and somebody gets suplexed over the over the ring. It was it was yeah, next man. level. <laughs> it was that was I didn't see it, but I was literally doing work last night. It was homework. like XFL. <laughs> no, seriously, I was doing homework last night, and <laughs> I saw it, like it kept blowing up on my phone. So I'm like, all right, what just happened? So then I look and I watch it. I said, oh my god, I gotta check Twitter. So all day my Twitter feed was just this. It was just insane. All but, types of NFL players. Look, I get all the NFL guys talking about you know, there's no place for this. Um, this was embarrassing. Uh, you know, these guys are professional athletes. You shouldn't be acting in this manner. And I totally understand that. But what we also have to keep in mind is that football is not a traditional game that you play with a traditional mindset. Um, it, you know, you really have to be a little bit insane. You know, a lot of great players have said that, you know, you have to be a little bit insane to play this game and to play it at the level that they do. Uh, and, and, and at the pros, you know, you're running full speed into 200 and 300 pound grown men. Like you have to be literally insane to want to do that every week, week in and week out. And so when you're on the field and you have that type of mindset, you're not thinking logically. You're not thinking how a normal human being would. And so that's what we have to remember. We have to remember that that's the reason why they acted in this manner. I don't think if you take these guys off the field that either one of them would act in that manner. But you put them onto a field and you and you and you cultivate this type of mindset. This, these are things that can happen. Fights happen. We talk about it all the time in preseason. That type of stuff happens. Even throughout the season, sometimes yeah. you'll have a few feuds on the field. It, it's part of the game. And yeah. I know this is egregious, and I know it is a little over the top. But let's not be foolish to act like we don't know where this is all coming from. Here, you know, here's the thing too. Um, with, I, I don't know, I don't know what your high school coach told you, but I vividly remembered one time, um, and I also saw a reference to this on Twitter. Somebody tweeted about this. My high school, one of my high school football coaches said to me one time, "quote Football is the one place where you can get away with." beating the dog crap out of another man and you're not going to jail for assault. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's the one place you can get all your aggression out, all your anger. And I know for me as a 16-year-old kid that a lot to be angry about, football was my release. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I love playing defense. I loved hitting somebody. Right. And that's what pe- this is what we fail to understand. We as Americans, right, when we, when we watch the game of football, it's literally the modern-day version of the Roman gladiators. We're literally watching men put their whole entire body and lives on the line going to risk, clashing against each other. And it's not like the 60s or the 50s NFL where these players might be 250 max. These are 300, 300 almost 
nearly 400-pound linemen crashing into each other with 200-pound running backs. The physics of it today are hard to comprehend for the average American. And so we're literally watching car accidents in real time. And then we expect these men to act with you know the most rationale. What Miles Garrett did was, you know... I don't I don't have a word for it. It was it was over the top. It was a lot. But I'm also not going to sit here and be outraged about it. Dan Levitard brought up something really interesting today on his show, highly highly questionable. Um, what he said was, you know, everything that went on in the game last night is 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 equally at almost is equally you know problematic as what happened in that one specific event. You know, we watched a player last night. We're not talking about this. Demetrius Randall hit a Steelers receiver. His name was last name is Johnson. I don't know his first name. But he got hit really hard after the play, a dirty hit. And he, he didn't get ejected, but he got a 15-yard penalty and, and the whole works. But, you know, these are the hits that we celebrate. You know, you remember on ESPN back when we were kids and they had the whole segment, you know, you know, you just got knocked out or what I forget what the segment was called. But or they or um, NFL Network used to have. I remember me and my uh, yeah. and one, one of my friends back home. He would come over to my house before we'd go to school and we'd watch NFL Blitz. Yeah. And you'd see all yeah, the yeah, crazy yeah, yeah, hits yeah, yeah. Of, that, of that week. Exactly. I mean, we used to glorify this. Yeah. And, you know, it's so funny that we, you know, we'll, we'll watch, you know, the replay of Joe Theismann getting his leg broken or, you know, um, Chad Ber- or Chuck Bernowski, you know, suplexing somebody in the 60s for the Eagles. You know, we'll watch all these things. But, you know, a guy taking his helmet off and swinging at somebody, is that's where we're going to get outrage. Right. This turned into the Outrage Olympics immediately. And, you know, people like Adam Schefter were tweeting assault. And, yeah, that. And, and, like, you know, and, and then Adam Schefter tweeted a story that somebody walked past him on the street and was like, oh, well, he should never be allowed to play in the league again. It's just, we live in an... This is going to sound very proud. We live, especially with sports for some reason, we live in like this automatic outrage culture where like mm-hmm. everything has to be worse than the next. And it's like we can hold two independent ideas at once that Mason Rudolph started it and Miles Garrett did something dumb. But everybody has a role to blame in this. That they're, that You can hold two opposing ideas in your hand at once and consider them both. And I yeah, think, yeah, There's a, there's a notion yeah. that we have to choose one. Mm-hmm. Both can't be right. Both, I mean, both can't be wrong. Both can't be right. Right. So, it, you have to choose one or the other. First of all, I, also, it's just a fallacy. I'd like to point out too that when one Orenthal James Simpson, right, when oh one Orenthal God. James Simpson is your man of reason on Twitter, something has gone horribly wrong. Billy, we are living in the end times. Yeah, <laughs> it hurt me so much because I saw the video. And I'm like, I what the- does OJ have to say? So I'm watching it, right? And I'm just like, man, OJ making some sense right now. <laughs> I start scratching my because it's like you don't I don't want to agree with OJ because you know he, he allegedly bias. killed his wife. Didn't kill his Fair, wife. We not do we not technically doing this he didn't kill her. We're not doing this on her. air. We're not anyway, doing this on air. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> no, but like. You, you don't want to agree with OJ, but I think he made a lot of sense. And I retweeted it, and I commented on it. I, I retweeted it, too. I also commented under my man's post under that. So I called him OJ the litigator. <laughs> <laughs> Wiley. Listen, man. My personal favorite, my favorite part of the OJ thing, and that I promise we'll get off OJ, was when he said, Miles, baby. You two hundred and eighty pounds. You don't need your helmet to you don't need your helmet to go after Rudolph. <laughs> I was like I was like, wait a minute, the expert <coughs> the expert of assault is is coaching another man on the And the comments was, were hilarious. Yo the comments were killing me. Nah, it was oh, out of man. pocket. But Yeah, they were wild. They I, were definitely wild. Here's what I think's interesting too. here's a here here's a story from ESPN today that just came out. Um and I'll I'll read part of it to you. Um, this is from Brooke Pryor of ESPN. The agent for so this is directly from the from the story. The agent for Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback Mason Rudolph isn't ruling out any legal option in the aftermath yeah, of that. Thursday's melee. Yeah, I saw that. Okay, I saw another really funny comment on Twitter, and I I unfortunately forgot to link it to my to my notes. But somebody said. If Mason Rudolph actually pursues action against Miles Garrett, he should never be allowed to play in the NFL again because that's some Johns Hopkins lacrosse type <laughs> type move. And I just, <laughs> but but that that even threw me off. 
in the whole situation because as soon as he gets hit by the helmet, he's he's looking to the ref like, whoa, like, whoa, like, Let what, me ask, bro? Like, what are you? Like, can I ask punk. you something? Like, what are you do? Like, if you're gonna yeah. do all that and you're gonna get enraged and you're gonna right. charge a grown man, at least be man enough to like take the hit and keep it moving. Yeah, like throw something back. Don't look at the ref like, right. Dad, what are you gonna do? Right. Let me ask. There was another thing swirling around too, Twitter, and I do want to ask you about this as black man. I want to ask you if Mason Rudolph had called Miles Garrett the N word. Do you think mm. I don't? I don't want to. I'm not trying to be too out of pocket, mm. but I do want to ask you. Miles, I think that's a Mason valid point. Rudolph ha- is has known in some Twitter circles as MAGA Rudolph. Like he has retweeted anti Kaepernick posts. He is conservative. He's you know he played at Oklahoma State. Not that anything to do it, but I'm just saying that he is conservative. He's a marked conservative. He has come out with his views. If Mason Rudolph did say something like calling him the N word or N word, oh, Jason, that justifies it. Okay, oh. that that's okay. So you answered my it, question. It does. Okay, because to me personally, no I at that point, I as at me personally, I'm like hands up, dog. Listen, you handle your business. If he called you the N word, that's between you, God, and the referee. I'm not, you know, I'm not at that. That'd point. That'd be very interesting because then how do we look at Pouncey? But look at but look at um. Well, here's the thing. Let, let's. I want to. We'll talk about Pouncey in a minute. Miles Garrett off the field. He writes poetry. Okay, this is a man who is who, yeah. who is a, who is a worldly man. A lot like he did. He, a did, lot like he, his did, have, he did have a he did have a flag though for punching. And some, he had a dirty hit with yeah. Simeon. But I'm just saying that off the field, he's, he's a worldly person. He's not known. Like there's a difference between having a dirty hit and you know what I'm saying. Like it's a difference between being a Vontez Burfitt and a Miles Garrett. Exactly, and that's what I'm getting at. Like you don't just go from regular trying to sack the quarterback and maybe trying to strip the ball away and if mason rudolph in that moment been like all right dude enough chill like <laughs> like we're, the play is done i'm done i'm i'm done i'm on the ground i'm vulnerable here can we you know can we all just like get along and you know there's like eight seconds left in the game dude like we're, can we just get out of here if he had done that right instead of trying to charge on him and like i said i don't know what was said in that moment but i just i don't see a situation where miles garrett goes from that to literally grabbing his helmet like a like like a weapon and swinging it at him that's what I'm saying. I don't know what I think. My and personal I don't think theory, Miles is gonna say anything because I, don't I think, think he, will either. he just realized automatically that he was he, in the wrong and he should have never let it get to that point. And that's why, like, I feel bad for like a little bit. Why I feel bad for I I, I feel for Miles. And also, you tell you, I feel for Miles too. I do because I'm a, I, my personal theory. I think I think Mason did call him the N word personally. That's what I think. I think something happened. I think he said something in that little scrum, the initial scrum, because you don't go from trying to strip the ball out to grabbing a helmet in in you know in five seconds without there being some escalation. And when generally not to stereotype, but when there's an escalation between a white person and a black person and it escalates where the black man is coming out it's generally because the white man said something of that of of egregious proportion. I think you're hundred percent right. I, you know listen, I don't think you're far it, off. That it's definitely generally can... it's generally not unprovoked. It's generally no no man, regardless of race, let me clarify, no man, regardless of race, is going to come after another man without being provoked. True. Unless oh, yeah, there's something course. completely off the rocker. And I don't think he's one of those types. Of, that's what I'm saying. There has right. to be more to the story. That's what I'm but saying. if we're just going to look at what we can see, I think it's also the the the, the jabbing, the kicking of the at, at the crotch area. Like, yeah, like that's how you gonna like, kick? How you gonna how you gonna kick a grown man in the nuts, right? Like, and then we. Come he, on. Here's the other thing too. How does Mason Rudolph get nothing? Yeah, that How does he get not even a fine. I but mean, this he, is this is this is but this nuts. is typical Roger Goodell no, stuff. No, 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 no. Because, dude, here's the thing. Four years ago, Nadal and Sue was like laying on the ground and kind of threw his spikes up toward a man. Like he was he's prone on the ground. And he threw his spikes up toward another lineman, kicked him in the nuts, and mm-hmm. he got like a game and like. A, you know, seventy five thousand dollar fine. Mason Rudolph literally. There's we have we, ladies and gentlemen, we have video footage of him grabbing. But because he got hit in the head with a helmet, he's letting. I'm trying to tell you, the public opinion right now is everybody let's coddle uh, Mason Rudolph. Let's coddle him. So right. Roger Goodell point out, is right. the idiot owner uh, commissioner that commissioner. he is, yeah. and you know he just follows what 
the public uh, perception is, and so, that's all he cares about. So because he's trying to regain some of that that popularity and some of that, you know, that good energy that he just doesn't get from the NFL fan base. He gets booed every time during the draft. Every time he steps to the podium, he gets booed because nobody likes him. So he's trying to he's trying to fix his popular opinion and his, his opinion uh, across the country. That's crazy, man. I he's appeasing to the fans. I I guess it's just. The problem is there is no 100% right party. There is no 100% wrong party. And this is like the worst time in history to have a situation with nuance, as we talk about a lot on this show. Yeah. And, you know, I, I'll tell you someone else is in a weird position. Baker Bayfield, like, what do you say after the game? I actually, I think he handled it well in terms of being like, hey, this is inexcusable. Miles knows that, you know. Um, and, Let's talk about Pouncey too. I want to go back to Pouncey for a minute. Yeah, we yeah. I kind of skip we'll, over. Him. We'll we'll touch on that briefly before we go before we you know move things along. I don't. Maybe Marquise Pouncey didn't know that Mason called. No, him of course I don't think he knew. I no, I if Pouncey what you, knew. So what do you what, think? But I think that because I feel like you were driving at something. I think that it's gonna look a little. I think Pouncey's gonna have a hard. Justification in the locker room? No, because he didn't know, but I think personally he's going to feel weird about it. And there's going to be an uneasiness about the whole situation because at that time and in that moment, he felt like he was doing what he was supposed to do. But now hindsight is bringing in the thought of, well, man, like. Did I just protect somebody who, like. Who doesn't respect me and my culture and the. You know, right. the, and the people and who look a, like me, and that's a that's a conundrum. That's something that that can tear on your mind. And that's a hellacious situation too, because you know you're told as a lineman, your first duty is to protect the quarterback. Mm-hmm. And you know what do you do in that? I mean, that, that's borderline impossible. I mean, that's because he was a few yards away when it occurred. He was right. blocking. Right. He was down. He's you know away. I don't know, man. I with. With Pouncey, I, I, again, I feel for him because, you know, you're trying to protect your quarterback and then you find out. I'm going to tell you something. If Mason Rudolph is stupid enough through his agent to go to lawsuit, something something's going to come out. And I'm telling you right now, if it does come out that Mason did call Miles Garrett the N-word, it's, it, it's going to be a real interesting time for him in the Steelers locker room. Oh, yeah, because they're not having none of that. No. Mike Tomlin is <laughs> – I mean, could you imagine, like, real quick, imagine being a white player and you say the N-word and, you're, and your head coach is a, is a black man? How do you, like, look at him the same? How do you – I don't I, know. I, I don't and know. especially – because it wasn't – The cognitive it wasn't, dissonance it was going to be in a, It was clearly in a derogatory way, too. Oh, yeah. So that even – Did you see his face, it. though? I mean, did, did you see – there was a really good close yeah. of his face. There were so many.